Okay, um, I still have all my pictures up here from the Beauty and the Beast dress rehearsal from earlier today. Um, we've done one or two tutorials already, but um, I do not have all my pictures yet on the computer. Um, some of them were on a second uh, video card, or I'm sorry, camera card, and I need to still import them in. So I'm going to show you the dialogue for importing them in. Um, Lightroom will keep track of everything that you import into Lightroom. So I always suggest that you bring your pictures in through an import dialog in Lightroom and not just through Bridge or um, directly transferring them in a window or whatever by dragging them. You always want to do it through Lightroom and um, then it can manage them. If you don't, you're still going to have to import them into Lightroom um, even though they're already on your hard drive. So to do that, we're going to go to File, and we're going to do Import Vid Photos and Video. Um, remember, this is Lightroom version 4. If you have a previous version, you will not see this word and video. So I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to get a dialog that opens up. And it will um, ask me for um, where do I want to import these images from. Um, I don't want to import them from any of my drives, um, my hard drives. I want to import them from my card, which is right here, Nikon D700. So I'm going to click on, well, I don't need to click on it. It's already selected. Um, it's showing me all photos. This um, only, I, on this card, I only have images from today. But if for some reason I had images from um, more than one shoot, um, some of them might already be in Lightroom. They've already been imported in. Um, I could select the word new photos and it would only show me the ones that Lightroom is not currently managing and ha does not know about. So it doesn't matter what directory they're in, if Lightroom is managing them, it could be even be on a hard drive that's not quite not connected right now, but Lightroom knows that those images exist and it has the data for them. Um, it won't let you um, import new ones. Okay, so we're going to do all photos. Um, these are check marked. If for some reason there was one that I knew I absolutely did not want, I could uncheck it. If I had more than one event, yeah, these are kind of dark right here. Oh, I know those are the townspeople. Those actually might work out when I open them up. They were they were in the dark. It was hard to photograph them. Um, so, um. I'm not seeing any that I absolutely know I don't want. But if for some reason I had two events on here, what I could do is I could uncheck all of them. I could select by clicking, holding the shift down, and just select a group of them, and then check mark them. And when I hit import, only those would come in. Um, for these, for this purpose, I definitely want all of them check marked, and I'm not going to highlight any specific group of them. Okay. I can just click on one. The one that you're clicked on has no bearing on which ones come in. Only the check mark ones come in. Um, so what we're going to do is um, this up here says don't select, don't import suspected duplicates. Um, that's a good thing to have copied. I have um, a backup drive here. Um, I'm going to keyword these. All of these get keyworded. I've done all these keywordings already previously. Um, because I've already have these photos from the first card in the computer. So when I start typing, it's going to auto insert what I'm typing. Some B E, there's Beauty and the Beast. I can arrow over or enter and comma. These are all from um, the dress rehearsal. There's dress rehearsal. These are all from our school, which is Emmanuel Lutheran School. I type I M and it gives me the options Emmanuel Lutheran School, <laughs> Imaging USA. Emmanuel, Emmanuel Lutheran Church. Well, these are from the school. I can click that. And then sometimes we call the school ILS, and it might be that someday I want to do a search for everything with ILS. So I make sure I always put that too. Anything that you think that you could possibly search on, um, you would want to do that. I actually probably should call this musical, and I'm not sure if I did that with the other ones. I'll have to double check. Um, I could also say stage. Um, I've done that before, um, and I also could call it a play, not playground, just play. I'll delete ground. So those are all those. Now, um, I do not use develop settings to bring photos in, and the reason I don't is because sometimes, um, and develop settings, first of all, could be exposure, could be 
clarity, it could be a vignette, it could be anything that you want it to do. It could be black and white, any settings that you have had you have presets for. I don't do it because on a regular basis I bring in completed images, 100% completed. Um, and I don't want to bring those in and then apply a preset to them. So um, I always leave that as none. Every time I say, oh, I'll remember to turn it off, I forget. So I leave that one off. I do keep into sub subfolder raw um, listed there. I have no idea why it was waiting on me there. Um, and because I always bring my raw images into a raw folder. Um, Right now, Beauty and the Beast is selected already here in my directory, but this is just a regular directory like any other um, hierarchy of folders. So these are all just different things that I have in my school and church folder within my um, K drive. Um, if I were to click on that and close it, and then click on my K drive, you can see that I have photo sessions from last year, photo sessions from this year blog images. Um, I did my CPP certification in January of 2011, so I have those, some family things, personal things, um, and here's my school and church folder again. Okay, so um, I'm going to go back to Beauty and the Beast. It will automatically put them into the raw directory for me because I am on this line here. If I were to um, uncheck this box, then if I wanted them in the raw directory, I would actually have to physically click on it. Either way is fine. Um, this is just my standard, so you have to come up with what your standard is. Okay, so um, I will hit import. It's going to give me a dialogue. It's going to take a few minutes to do that. I'm going to hit pause on the video and come back once it's done importing. So here's the import button, and I'll be back in just a second. Okay, so uh, I just started the recording back up. The import has finished, and um, this is what it looks like when it finishes. It brought it into the, or it shows it in the grid. I'm in the library module. Um, if you look over here in the catalog, it shows that this is the previous import. This is the current import. Um, I could also look at these in the folder. Let me go down to the folder. I could also look at them here in this folder. Um, that's just a headshot we did a couple weeks ago. Um, in this raw one, but for the purposes of this, I'm going to just not worry about all the other images that are already in that raw folder. Those are in that raw folder down there, but I just want to work with the ones that I just imported. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do some um, quick developing on these. Um, I could select them all, control A, and I could put a preset on them. Um, I showed in the other video that I like to use um, a preset that, let me go into develop so it's easier to see. It's one of my user presets that I created. Um, this one right here, clarity, noise reduction, and vignette. This is the preset that I usually do on um, non-studio portraits um, or pictures, just snapshots or events, um, corporate events when I do the parties, um, those kind of things. I, I add a little bit of clarity. I take away the noise reduction. Usually I'm shooting at a higher ISO um, when I'm not in the studio. In the studio, I actually have this one up here, which is, um, it gives me a basic clarity. It adds a strong contrast. It makes it camera portrait. Um, and it's a little, it does not have the vignette around it um, because a lot of my um, studio work is um, high and mid key. So I don't need that vignette around everything. So I don't have that on my, this is my studio one. And this one right here, the clarity, noise reduction, and vignette is very similar to it, but it's more specified to the way I shoot um, non-studio images. So um, I can apply that one to all of them at the same time. I could apply it here in the develop module and then down here at the lower right, click the sync button and sync it to everything that is selected. Um, but for right now, I'm going to show you how to do it in the library module. All right, so I have all of them selected. I hit control A. You can see that they're selected down at the bottom. You can see that they're selected here in the grid. Lightroom 4 has improved the presets here. If you do not have Lightroom 
four, you're going to see a long, long list. The more presets you have, the longer your list. And it's organized alphabetically, sort of. It's alphabetically according to groups. So um, the, the preloaded ones are different from the user selected ones, which I think are different than the um, imported ones, um, or user created and imported. But, and that's in Lightroom 3 and under. In Lightroom 4, watch how nice it is. They have this little file structure here so I can find my user presets and these are ones that I have personally created. Um, those are different from the ones that I've imported and they're different from these Lightroom ones that are um, standard with Lightroom 4. I know Lightroom 3 had some standard. So let's go to my user one and I'm going to go to Clarity Noise Reduction Vignette. When I click it, it will apply it to every one of them and you should see it starting to work on through. You'll see, oh it's already down here. There we go. So it's it's working its way through. There are 149 photos, so it's going to take a few seconds for it to work through. Now, I don't have to wait for it to work through, though. I can go in and do other things that I want to do. Um, probably the next step for me and is just to go through and hit P, U, or X. Um, P for pick or select it. Um, I want to keep it. U for I have no idea if I want to keep it, and X for no way it's rejected. So I'll go through here and I'll just hit my P's and my X's, and I'm just hitting P on most of these. That one is a little harder to see, I guess. I could X. I wanted a picture of the table. I did that on purpose. So, um, and I'm not worried about slight imperfections in. Um, Exposure, I've mentioned before that I was using an auto ISO, which um, is good for when the lighting changes quickly, but it's not always perfect. So um, I'm not really going to worry about that as long as it's a pretty good shot. This one is not a good shot. Eyes are closed. She's dark, but they did not have a spotlight on her, so I'll just have to edit that and look at my beautiful daughter. Ugh. So... Anyway, I'll go through and do these when I'm not recording, but um, that would be the next step. And then editing them real quick and doing some quick cropping would be um, all that's needed on the rest. Thanks.